Okay guys, so this is half cells and electrode potentials. Uh, this is probably going to be quite a long one. So what is a half cell? Well a half cell is when you have an element in two different oxidation states. So for example, what I could have is a big lump of copper. So that's an uncombined element because it's just copper, so that has an oxidation state of zero. And we put that in a beaker, and in that beaker is some uh, copper two plus ions. And if this was under standard conditions, that would be a one mole per decimeter cubed concentration. Uh, other standard conditions would be 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees C and one atmosphere. As standard, you know, normal room conditions, there is one atmosphere on top of us. So what we do is we have our, remember our solid copper, uh, Cu, and our Cu2 plus in the solution. And we attach that to a wire. And that way you will go to either voltmeter, if you wanted to record the voltage, or a light bulb, a heater, whatever it is you want to supply energy to if you're using this as a battery. And that's our half cell. To make a whole cell, we need two of those. So on the other side of this wire, there's going to be another metal, whatever that is, and another ion of that metal in the solution. And again, we don't know what this is. This could be a zinc and Zn2+, plus, anything like that, okay? Now, here's what happens. If I zoom in on this copper electrode, so imagine this is me looking through a, micro, a microscope, or a magnifying glass, imagine these are my atoms of copper. Like that, and this is the wire uh, coming out the top of them. Well, what happens is, uh, copper, in this case, what it will do is it will give up the electrons, so one of these atoms loses two electrons, so that's lost two electrons, the electrons travel up and through the wire, so they're travelling up here, across here, and down into here, and the atom, once it has lost two electrons, becomes uh, a two plus ion because it's lost the two electrons. And this two plus ion just adds to the other copper ions in this solution. Now the electron, like we said, travels up here, goes past the light bulb or the heater, and as it does, it gives it some of this energy. And that's what causes, or what allows the, the light bulb to shine, or the heater to give out heat. Because as the electrons pass, they give it some of their energy. Uh, electrons then travel into this, what we call electrode here, Again, so here's my wire. Now here, my electrons are coming down, so imagine this red pen is an electron, or a couple of electrons. They come down the wire and into the electrode, and one of your zinc 2 plus ions in solution, that approaches the electrode, and when it does, it takes two of the electrons from the electrode. Remember, they're travelling down the wire into it. So two of the electrons get added onto this 2 plus ion to make it a normal atom with no charge. So you could say a 0 plus, and that adds itself on. Then another ion comes along and makes two more electrons to add on as well, and another one, and another one, and another one. So over time, what happens is, and it depends what you have to determine which does what, but uh, on one side, in one half cell, your atoms will lose electrons to become ions. The electrons will travel across, give some of their energy up, and then the electrons will add to the ions here to become atoms. So you kind of get the opposite thing happening at either end. Um, one of them is losing electrons and the other one's gaining it. One of them is going from atoms to ions, the other one's going from ions to atoms. Okay? Now ask you a question, have a think about this. What's going to happen to the charge in here over time? Is it going to get more positive or is it going to get more negative? Okay, well think about it. If we're making more positive ions, over time the charge in here is going to get really, really positive. And if here we're losing our positive ions, over time it's going to get less positive or more negative over time. And if this happens too much, uh, your cell will stop to work. The electrons won't be able to travel across anymore if this becomes too positive and this becomes too negative. 
So we need a way of balancing the charges. And the way we do that is we add something called a salt bridge. Now I'm just going to put this off and have a A salt bridge, uh, it, may be, it can be anything as simple as just a piece of tissue paper soaked in the salt. Now the salts we use are potassium nitrate, KNO3, or ammonium nitrate, NH4, NO3. So remember, this side, over time, is getting more and more positive, and this side is getting more and more negative. So what happens is, let's say we're using potassium nitrate, although it's a similar circumstance if it was ammonium nitrate. And what happens is this dissociates into K plus and NO3 minus. Your NO3 minus goes from your salt bridge into here to balance the charge out, because the minus and the positive cancel out. Your K plus goes from the salt bridge into here and balances that charge out, because your plus and your minus cancel out. So it it can only work for a certain amount of time, and that's why batteries have a certain life, because as soon as you've run out of ions in here, you could say your salt bridge has been used up, uh, the charge quickly grows, and then the, the, the battery stops to work. So that's how it works, that's like the basics. There's a couple of things you'll have to do uh, with these kind of equations. So what I've done is I've popped up some data on this side, and this is electrode potential data. So this is electrode potential in volts. Okay, and this is the cell you have. So Cu2 plus Cu would represent what I had over here with a solid lump of copper and some colored co copper ions in solution. Okay, this would represent a solid lump of chromium and some chromium 3 plus ions in solution. Uh, so what we do, what they could ask you to do, is to find out uh, the electrode potential of a cell. Now any cell, like I said, has to be made of two half cells, so they'll give you two half cells. Let's say, for example, they chose copper and iron, these two here. This is dead, dead simple. If you want to find out the electrode potential between two half cells, all you need to do is take the difference between these two numbers. So it's basically the difference between minus 0.44 and plus 0.34. Well, the difference there, I'm going to do maths now, is 0.78. That's the difference between the two. If it was between my copper and my uh, chromium, the difference would be 0. Well, uh, sorry, 1.08. Because the difference between positive 0.34 and negative 0.74 is 1.08. So that's how you do that. Dead, dead simple. The important thing to remember, and this is where it always goes wrong, people think, right, um, well, let's say I'm doing copper and uh, silver there. Okay, so copper is losing two electrons, silver is only going to be uh, doing the one electron. So I just need to double this to make it balance out. You don't need to do that. You don't alter these numbers in any way, ever, no matter what you do. No matter what it is, what the equation is, how many electrons you have, it's just the original numbers you always use. So don't ever double, and that's a temptation a lot of people kind of fall into doing that. And the final thing they'll ask you to do is how to do a uh, basically a balanced equation for what's actually happening in your cell. Well, the rule is, the more negative thing is the thing that is uh, losing the electrons. Well, let's say I have my Cu2 plus. So I've got my Cu2 plus add two electrons goes to Cu, Zn2 plus add two electrons goes to Zn. They will always rate it down in this way. Whenever you do an electrode potential, they always give it as the reduction equation. Remember, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons. So look, these are both gaining electrons. But obviously, both of my elements can't gain electrons, that doesn't make sense. One of them has to gain electrons, one of them has to lose electrons. And as, as I mentioned earlier, it's the more negative 
uh, electrode potential, that is the element that loses its electrons. So what you have to do is you have to look at the two they've chosen, so we're now looking at these two, you have to figure out which of these two has the more negative electrode potential, and that's dead easy, you just look at the number. Okay, so zinc has got the more negative one, and then what you have to do is you have to flip the equation around, or this equivalent of reversing the arrow. So let's flip this around. So zinc's the more negative, so I'm going to flip that around. Zinc goes to Zn2 plus, goes to minus, and then you need to combine your equations. So I've got my Cu2 plus plus Zn. The two electrons here are going to cancel out the two electrons there. So I'm not going to write this down on either side. And that goes to Cu plus Zn2 plus. So that's how you write a balanced equation. It gets ever so slightly more difficult if they're not balanced to start off with. So I'll just go through one of those. Let's say this time we've got silver and copper. So we start off with Cu2 plus plus 2e minus goes to Cu and Ag plus plus e minus goes to Ag. If they're not balanced, all you have to do is take an extra step to balance them at the very, very start. So, uh, I look at this, copper has got two electrons involved in it, silver's only got one, I just need to double this equation here. So I'm just going to add a big uh, two, of the big number, your molar numbers, in front of everything there. And then, uh, just like before, I'm going to look at which is the most negative electrode potential. Well, this time it's positive 0.8 and positive 0.34, so copper is the, the least positive, the more negative one. Therefore, I must need to reverse the copper. Remember, they'll always start as reduction, you reverse the more negative one. So, let's reverse that, so that's Cu goes to Cu2 plus, plus 2 minus, and again, just like before, combine them together. So I've now got Cu plus 2Ag plus goes to Cu2 plus plus 2Ag. And you can check whether you've balanced it correctly because the charges on each side should cancel out. So look, I've got two 1 plus charges, that's a total of two, and one 2 plus charge, so they cancel. And just like before, my two electrons on this side cancelled out my two electrons on that side, so that's why I didn't write it down. When you do your final equation, you shouldn't have any electrons left over if you've done it correctly. Okay, that's how we do that. And there are just one or two other little tiny extra things they could ask you. Sometimes they say they're using a hydrogen half cell. Now, hydrogen is basically uh, H plus plus E minus goes to uh, half H2, like that. Now, I said before, we have a solid lump of the element dissolved in a solution of the element. Now, that's impossible with H2. Obviously, H plus can still be in solution, and you could use an acid to generate that. But H2, you can't get a solid lump of H2, you know, unless you use ridiculous conditions, really, really cold. In fact, I don't think you can ever get it. So, uh, what you have to do instead is we use a platinum electrode. Okay? The reason we use platinum is because it is inert and it won't react with anything, so we can basically completely ignore it. All this acts for is a place for your uh, H plus ions to gain the electrons and for your H2 to give up an electron. So what we then do is you put, so this is my wire, we put a big glass container around it, like so. And uh, into that glass container, we put some hydrogen gas. And the hydrogen gas comes down here, we've got H plus in there, then it can react at the electrode here, the platinum electrode. So if I, again, if I was to zoom in on that, here's my electrode. Uh, let's say uh, the hydrogen is being reduced, so it's gaining electrons. What will happen is your H plus will come to the electrode, an electron will come down, give itself to the H+, and that will become your half H2. Of course, it could work in reverse if this was the more negative electrode, and your H2 could come to the electrode, give up an electron, and become H+. 
So all this acts for, this platinum electrode, is a place for your reaction to take place. And one more final thing. So remember, we use platinum because it's inert. And that is if you have two different ions. So what we can have is your Fe3 plus Fe2 plus ion. Remember, always written as oxidation. Uh, and again, all we do is we use a platinum electrode because it's inert. And we stick both of our ions in the solution. So I have Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus in the solution. And just like before, the platinum electrode acts as a place for the uh, picking up or losing of electrons to take place on. And that is uh, half cells and electrode potentials.